My name's Pauline Quinn and I'm from the Kappa area of County Tyrone and um, my first experience of uh, as a both political awareness was whenever um, I was 16 and you know Martin Harson was a, a hunger striker who had, who had died and um, he would have lived in our local area and I suppose from that time then I would have been very aware that, that things weren't right in this area. My own journey is suppose that you don't ever think about um, being imprisoned but you're aware of it but my, my journey to Armagh jail began in 1986 when I was arrested um, in Lurgan in County Armagh. You, I got taken to golf barracks in Armagh for, for you were held there for seven days and while I was in Armagh jail it was in it was in March and it was March 1986 and I remember the RUC saying to me that um, did I hear the voices I'd say shouting and I could hear I could hear these crowds of um, of people shouting prisoners names <coughs> that were in Armagh jail names that I had been aware of names that that um, as a boss, you know, I had grew up with the likes of Maria Farrell, um, Christine Beatty, Geraldine Crawford, Sheila Dara, um, Margaret Nugent, loads and loads, loads of women. And what it was, was that it was International Women's Day on the 8th of March, 1986. And uh, there were, you know, loads of groups of people had been there in support of the prisoners and they were shouting out their support. And the cops were saying to me, oh, next year your name will be on that list and you're going to go into Armagh jail and, you know, it's God help you because, you know, you'll be fresh, mate, you'll be, you know, and they just went over this really rude stuff about what was going to happen to me. So I was young and, and you know, I was a Republican and knew why I was there and knew what my reasons were. So that was the start of the journey in Armagh jail when I was charged and taken to... Um, Armagh to the actual door of it. I'll never forget the drive down the mall in Armagh. Now, if you know this town, there is loads of, it just seems like a very British town. There's loads of emblems. There's the Royal British Legion. There's the courthouse on the left. Then you have this lovely green where the day that I was taken into court, there was, or into the jail, there was cricket being played. So this like surreal situation of me standing at the door surrounded by RUC men and I just looked behind me and people just going about their, their normal everyday lives and having no idea what went on inside this jail. Well, Armagh jail was, was built in 1780 and it was a mixed prison but then by the 1920s it was exclusively um, a, a women's prison and then in the 1950s and 60s it was used for, um, the British used it for interning um, uh, males and, and females and then by 1970 it had then been used again for internment and then for women as well, it was then exclusively moved back then to, to a women's prison. The, the European Court of Human Rights had found Britain guilty of inhumane and degrading treatment of the internees. So after, um, say in 1976 then, when anybody who had been sentenced after um, 1st of March, I think it was 1976, uh, were no longer considered political prisoners. So therefore, you know, that was the British government's way of bringing in um, something that would demoralise and break the resistance of Republican prisoners. Because don't forget, before this, you know, all those POWs were recognised as political prisoners who would not have been there in those jails only for the situation that was, was in our country at that time. We had the NOC of, of the wing and we had our own command structure. So therefore, you know, the screws up until that date had been recognising this structure. But then after that date, then it was, we no longer recognise that. But what they wanted the women to recognise was their authority. So if you accepted that, then you accepted criminalisation. Women went on the, the, the protest in Armagh jail um, 
the screws then lock them up for 23 hours a day and by them refusing to do work every day whenever the screw would open the, the cell door and they would say to them, um, Maria Farrell, are you ready for work or whatever? And she would refuse. So they would put her in report, which was really petty, mean harassment, which meant that all those women were losing remission every single day. Um, and one day that it culminated in a vicious beating by male screws in Irma jail, male and female screws which left some of the women with really, really serious injuries. Um, so by 19, say by February 1980, the women then were locked in their cells 23 hours a day. Uh, all privileges were taken off them, no toilet facilities. A woman who was, um, who had her period, um, living in a cell where you put the contents of what was in your chamber pot and you smeared that on the wall. The protest in Armagh jail has often been seen as the women being in sympathy with, with the men in, in the H-blocks, but they were political prisoners in their own right and, and they had their own protest. And, you know, the war, <clears throat> I've said this before, but, you know, there was a war being fought outside, but there was also a war being fought inside. Because they, they were struggling for, you know, every, for everything in the jail. And, and they were met all the time by resistance and by, you know, the harassment and petty vindictiveness. And every time that, um, you know, that they, they protested and, 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 and were successful in the protests, the prison regime brought in something else. Like in 1982, they then brought in strip searching, which had absolutely no security relevance whatsoever. A lot of groups uh, at the time um, would have came on board and there would have been a lot of uh, anti-strip searching uh, uh, committees and all set up and, and I suppose that, that was a major thing for us in jail was the support from the people on the outside. People um, who tried to highlight that and worked tirelessly for, for us in there and, and, and I suppose those people you know, have went kind of unnoticed, you know, and where, wherever they are now, and if they ever see this, you know, I would just like to say, you know, on behalf of myself and all the women POWs, thanks so much for everything. Irma Jail then closed in the 18th of March, 1986 and um, we were taken to McGabry Jail, which was in County Antrim, and they transported us in, um, they were like horse boxes. McGabry, um, they had curtains on the window, you know, the curtains, and, and that really struck me because the cells had a toilet in them, plus they had curtains on the window and bars that had nice wee fancy designs on them. Now, where were they going with that one? The wings also were, there was only, t you know, two levels. So it wasn't like that to old Victorian jail of where you had to, you know, go on to the lanterns and, and keep climbing. The day carrying out an extensive search of the area around Kappa. For much of the day, the area around the scene of the murders remained cordoned off, while forensic experts conducted a detailed examination of the car in which three of the victims were travelling. I turned on the radio Details of and the heard have yet to be fully on the news together. that there had been a shooting in Kappa. And that sense of knowing, you know, that 
no matter who it is, it's going to be somebody I know. But that rise and feeling of, it's my brother. So I would say only for those women that were there in the jail with me at that time, I don't think I would have got through it. And then the month after John was killed, my grandfather died. And I had been given a compassionate visit to, uh, they wouldn't allow me out to go to the funeral. Um, were very gracious in giving me one hour of a visit with my family. So it was on the way back from that visit that they forced a strip search upon me, which would not have been a normal procedure. They took me into reception area and locked the doors and eight of them um, because that I refused to be strip searched. Then ripped my clothes off and they also done an internal search as well. Compassion. Hate filled eyes and gleeful smiles. Eight pairs of hands pulling clothes, pulling hair and tearing flesh. Pulling legs apart to search between. Does my struggle add to your fun? My resistance give you pleasure. This degradation and humiliation does not make you flinch. You do not react to my screams. Where is humanity? your dignity, your shame, as you degrade you and I and all of womanhood by this disgusting act. <laughs>